Hey everybody, Mr. Hayes, back here, Hayes' World of Math. We're talking through AP Stats. All of this is again on statsmatic.com. I've got a link to my notes down below in the description. Obviously, comment, like, subscribe, hit the little bell, everything that Mr. Beast tells you to do. Um, except I'm not gonna delete your Minecraft account. So um, what we're talking about today, we're starting 7.3, so it's gonna be kind of one of those more basic lessons. Um, and we're gonna be talking about how sampling, how means of sampling distributions work. So um, the setup here, and if you could see this, this would be because my printer ran out of toner. Um, it is all from the Princess Bride because I know you can see how the different heights are. And so that's what we're going to talk about. We're talking about a small high school downstate Illinois. We're supposing that there's 50 seniors there. And this is their distribution. So this is the population distribution because we're talking about all 50 seniors. Now the first question that you as students would go through is make a guess in terms of all the means. Most of the time people kind of pick right around 170 because obviously that's the tallest one. You can kind of see this is somewhat normal. Standard deviation like we talked about last time, if you can kind of get a sense of where that inflection point is, that's always where that first inflection being where it goes from, you know, concave up to concave down um, or concave to convex for you physicists out there. It's about 160, so you could probably say right around 10 cents comfortable standard deviation. And then what you guys would go through and do is that, you go, oh, and by the way, what is this? We'd be remiss if we didn't talk about this. What is that right there? That is one student who has a height of 188 centimeters. So again, um, biggest one was 188. This would be one student um, whose height is 140 centimeters, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. But again, that idea that each one of these dot plots, kind of making sure that your dots on a dot plot, making sure you understand what each of those are is important. Um, so you would go through and do that. Then the next thing that you guys are asked to do is to go through and find a random sample of five students. And you're going to calculate out the mean height for that sample. So you would write out the, so again, simple random sample, you could write all of them on 50 slips of paper, stick them in a hat, whatever you want to do. Something that's sufficient with sufficient mixing at the end of the hat thing. You pick them out and you do the averages. And then we're gonna make our own dot plot. So this is an example, this isn't quite all the points, but this is similar to what I had last year in class. So now again, you kind of see the mean is happening right around here. My mean was right around 170 again. But notice a couple of things here. Actually, don't worry, I'm gonna wait for that. Um, so what is this point like right here? Okay, this is one sample of five students. and their mean height. So down in four, we ask you, okay, well, what are some things, you know, describe this, what's going on? And so usually, so again, remember, we're talking about shape, center, and variability. So the shape, most people will say it's roughly symmetric. Um, you've got a single peak right at 170. I don't know if we necessarily call it the mean yet, but you could just say the single peak because that's going to kind of indicate where you're centered. So your center is going to be approximately 170 centimeters. Now, in terms of your variability, remember, we're going to use that to talk about standard deviation. Okay, and actually, I forgot that. So maybe standard deviation is, so the standard deviation of x bar is equal to about 4 centimeters. How did I get that? Same idea. Going on down like this. So where is that curve happening? Oh, right about there. You might be able to get away with the five. Now the interesting thing here is why does it make sense that this standard deviation shrinks in? And we talked about this a little bit before, but let's go back and look at the original data. If I go up here, what is the lowest bit of data that you can have? Well, the lowest bit sample you can have would be these five people right here, right? So 140, 149, and then let's say 155, 156, 157. So what's the average of that? That average is going to be about here. So now your new minimum, instead of being 140, is actually up over here. And you can do the same thing over here with your top four. So I've got 182, 182, 183, 183, 188. So that means that that maximum average is gonna be there. So now you've already shrunk it all in. So it makes sense that if we're going to do a distribu plot, distribution of samples of five, that it's going to get tighter. And obviously, if the samples get bigger, we're gonna include more of these centered ones here. So again, it's gonna get tighter and tighter and tighter. Again, it's part of the reason why index funds tend to work. 
you don't get the extremes out there because you're averaging it against a whole bunch of other things. And if you're not sure what an index mutual fund is, wait until you get to consumer education. Um, so now compare the two dot plots with above. How are they similar and how are they different? Oh, and by the way, the actual mean up here is 168.96 centimeters. So that 170 was really, really close. And the standard deviation is 9.6. So that idea, I mean, just so that idea that you can kind of get a sense of it from the dot plot isn't that far off. So the things that are the same, obviously the shape and the centers are similar, which is very helpful as you'll see here in a minute. But what's different is the variability. The second dot plot is much less variable for the reasons that we just talked about because you're, the extremes aren't so extreme because they get balanced with something in the center. So hopefully this makes some sense. We're gonna go back and formalize this here in a second. Talk to you soon.